Afternoon, guys. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School back out here at the hunting camp. What I thought I'd do today is I would cook a real simple crowd favorite. It only takes three ingredients. It's simple to carry with you into the woods, into a hunting camp, and it gives you something you can make without having to harvest something off the landscape to give you a good, hearty meal. So what we're going to make is we're going to make chili mac, and we're going to use three simple ingredients for that. We've got one can of Keystone pre-cooked ground beef here. We don't have to use the whole can. We can save more for later. If it's cold outside, that's really easy. Throw it in a Ziploc bag, throw it in your tote or whatever you're using to keep animals away from your food, in your gamma lid bucket like I do. Hoist that thing up in the air if you're worried about bears, things like that. You're good to go and you're ready to use it again. We've got one box of Kraft macaroni and cheese and we have one packet of chili mix if we were gonna make chili, all right? Same thing, that's gonna make our chili mac. Simplest thing on the planet. First thing we need to do, boil some water and get this macaroni boiled down because remember, this is pre-cooked, it just needs to be warmed up and the seasoning is nothing. We'll mix that in a skillet and then we'll mix it with this. So we're gonna open this bad boy up, get it in the water over the fire and get it boiling and go from there. Stay with me. All right, mac and cheese noodles are in, pack it goes to the side. I don't like grease in there. Good stuff, Maynard. All right, get this heated up in the skillet. Ready to add some mac and cheese with this bad boy and some chili seasoning. Ready to go. We'll use about half of that pack in this burger here. Mix that around in there real good. I'm really just mixing this in and looking at the color. And I'll decide if I need the rest of it or maybe just a little bit more, none at all. Looks like I get it all mixed in good here. Look at my color. I'm pretty red, so I've got a lot of chili in there, which means it's probably gonna be pretty good the way it is. Right. Last but not least, three cheese mix in there. Right. Say so we're ready now. 
for sure. Coals out from underneath there. Let it cool down for a minute. Better to eat some vittles. Now, while our dinner's cooling down, we're gonna start prepping to wash things up. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the biggest pot we've got, which is our three-quart bush pot. And we're gonna get some hot water in that dude. Now again, this could be creek water. You could just take this right out of the creek, wouldn't be a big deal. You're gonna boil it anyway. And boiling kills just about everything. But we'll go ahead and take this pot and put it over the fire with some water in it. Get it nice and hot. It doesn't hurt anything to actually soak things like silverware and cooking implements in that water while it's cooking, while it's getting hot either. So we'll go ahead and put that cook spoon in there. We'll leave the spoon out to eat with. We didn't really dirty up a lot of dishes, so we don't have to worry about a lot. We've got a bush pot we're gonna have to clean, a skillet and spoon we're gonna have to clean, and we've got that stirring spoon we have to clean. But we got plenty of water in this bush pot to do that with, and I'll show you how that works in a few minutes. About the only thing we've got left on this chili mac is to give it a taste. And I'll tell you what, I'm a big fan when I'm alone in camp of just eating right out of the skillet. Dirty less dishes that way. Oh, man. Wow. That's fantastic. Man. That's some chili mac to die for right there, boy. Woo -wee. Man, that's good. Golly. I can eat that all day. Mm-mm-mm. Man, oh man, that's good. That is perfect as perfect gets right there. Man. Mm -mm -mm. Dang. All right, guys. Well, we just got to cook some chili mac here. We made a few dishes. I'm not even done eating my chili mac. Get out of the skillet. But what I wanted to address was we had some questions on our Facebook page, the SRO Facebook page. Now, one of the questions that was asked on there and it had the most likes of any question, I actually had a couple replies, was by a guy named Tim Piper. And he was asking about how you clean up your cookware after the fact, assuming that you don't have, you know, a sink and liquid soap and all of those types of things. And there's quite a few different ways you can do that. We're gonna address some of that in this video. But what I wanted to say is that we really appreciate that feedback. And what I'm gonna do is, SRO is going to send Tim Piper. They're going to reach out to you. They're going to send you an SRO care package for giving me the idea for this video that will be on the Self-Reliance Outfitters channel. We're going to talk about how you clean dishes up after the fact in cooking. And we're going to talk a little bit about different ways of doing that, assuming that we have water nearby. You have to think about that for a minute because I've heard people say, well, what if you don't have any water to do your dishes? If you don't have any water to do your dishes, then you shouldn't be cooking food because in turn, you probably don't have enough water to be drinking either to metabolize that food. So there's a give and take there. You have to use some common sense. If you've got a creek nearby, you've got a source of water that you can get a couple bush pots out of, you've got plenty of water to hydrate and cook food, and you've got plenty of water to do dishes. The creek's probably not gonna run dry overnight on you. So take those things into account when you're asking about how to do certain things because I don't like those what-if scenarios of, what if I don't have any water at all? If I don't have any water at all, I shouldn't be cooking food at all. I should be more worried about drinking the water and disinfecting that than eating food. However, we've got a creek down at the bottom of the hill here from the hunting camp. I brought some water in with me to the hunting camp. I actually did bring soap in here in the form of a liquid soap that I carry in my camp box, but we're not gonna use that today. We're gonna talk about just how do we do it if we're short on those type things. And ashes, they contain lye, so ashes can be used to wash your dishes. You can put some ashes from the fire in with the water, mix it in with the water, and use it as a acidic base to help wash your dishes in hot water. 
and it will work just fine. You can just use the hot water. Remember that boiling kills about everything. So if you scrape all of the nasty food out of it beforehand and then wash it with boiling water and put it over the fire and things like that, you're going to kill everything in it and then you just have to wipe it out. Now, if you didn't have enough water to use to clean your dishes after the fact, or for some reason you were running low, didn't want to run down to the creek, whatever the case may be, you could just turn the skillet upside down over the fire and burn the food out and then scrape out the char later. And you can eat off of that pan, skillet, whatever it is after the fact. It's not going to be a problem either. You could also take it right down to the creek if you've got a sandy bank and you can wash that skillet or that bowl or that saucepan or whatever it is with sand. Just scrub it out real good with the sand. Don't worry about the water. Bring it back up to the fire, put it over the fire to dry, and that will kill anything nasty that was in the water that you subsequently got on your dishes. So there's lots and lots of ways to do this. We've got a three quart bush pot over the fire right now, heating the water up to a boil. We're gonna use that water to clean what we've done today. We're gonna take the remainder of the skillet from our chili mac. We're gonna scrape that food off away from our camp somewhere, well away, if we can't dispose of it or if we don't eat it all. And then we're going to take what's left of our bush pot, our two quart bush pot, we have some bits and things like that of the macaroni in there and some things that are stuck to it. All right, so what we've got left in this skillet, we're just gonna scrape it down with our spoon as best we can to get the major amount of gunk out of it. You don't wanna burn food to your skillet if you can help it, obviously. That will make it much easier to clean if you don't do that. However, that food can be burned off after the fact. It's better than nothing, all right? Once you get that, same thing with the spoon. I'll take leaves and I'll wipe it out with leaves to get any major league gunk off of it. Remembering that I'm gonna boil it anyway, any dirt that's in the leaves doesn't make any difference at all to me. So I'll wipe all this stuff off as best I can with leaves and I'll boil it after the fact to clean the rest of it out of there. And you can see that spoon's fairly clean just from the leaves. Now, I'll do the same thing with my skillet. I'll grab a pile of these damp leaves and dirt and I'll wipe this out really good, just like this. Grab another pile. And you can see most of the stuff is out of that skillet now. Now I just need to boil some water in and it's gonna be good to go. Okay, so I've done pretty much the same thing with all of my cookware, wiped it out with those leaves. Now all I'm gonna do is come in here, grab this bush pot, pour a little bit of water in the skillet, right over top of the utensils, just like that. Pour some water in this bush pot. I'll just transfer all of the water from one to the other. I'll take this bush pot off because it's clean. It doesn't matter. Set it off to the side. Take this bush pot and put it over the heat so that water stays hot, just like that. Now, if I don't have a rag, I'll just use my hands and I'll wipe the inside of that skillet down really good with that hot water. And then I might even boil that water on the skillet while it's sitting here. But you can feel with your hands, you can feel any junk that's stuck to the bottom of that skillet and you can wipe it out. If you got a rag, wipe it out with a rag. Take some kind of a camp rag or bandana, get a little bit of the water out of there so we're not sloshing around too much in our fire. Just wipe that down really good. Dump it out, turn it over right over top of the fire, just like that. Take these utensils, wipe them down the same way. You can do it with your hands or you can do it with a rag. It doesn't really matter. Hot, hot, hot bandana will do the same thing. And you can put those utensils right over the fire as well, over the heat there, and it's not gonna hurt anything at all to do that. And this bush pot's already overheat with water. So all we need to do now is scoot some heat underneath this stuff to dry it out, get some heat underneath this bush pot, build our fire up a little bit. We're gonna have clean dishes here in just a minute. All right, guys, well, I appreciate you joining me out here today for this quick video on how to make chili mac in camp. Really, really simple recipe, but I get a lot of requests for camp cooking and cooking type videos. So I thought I'd throw that out there for you because it is one of my favorites and it's really, really dead simple to make and easy components to carry with you into a base camp. I appreciate your views. I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business. 
one of our sponsors, Instructors, Affiliates, and Friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can, guys. Thanks. Thanks.